Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video topic is going to be the top 10 mistakes that new ferret owners make. I created this video, okay Batsu, I created this video with the help of um, some people over on the ferret subreddit on Reddit. I asked them what sort of mistakes that they've made uh, just starting out and uh, so that I could talk about it in a video because we all make mistakes and it's very, <laughs> thank you Batsu, it's very good of us to go back and recognize those mistakes and hopefully make it a learning experience so that we can share it with new owners so that they don't make the same mistakes because I made a lot of mistakes in the beginning with Patsu. We're going to talk about them today so that hopefully if you're looking at getting a ferret you can sort of skip through that <laughs> mistake making phase and go right on to being an awesome pet owner. Are you gonna sit with me for the video? I'm going to start from 10 and then work my way up. Number 10 is choosing water bottles over bowls. This isn't a huge problem, but uh, water bottles have been known to chip teeth and they also just don't give the ferret enough water that they need. They kind of have to, it's sort of like a chore. For them, it was more of like a game. Um, they liked just trying to get the water out. It wasn't... I don't think it was a very good source for them to get their water out of. Again, I have made this mistake. I did, uh, when I first started out, I got water bottles because they would, or Patsu would just frequently dump the water in his water dish. What I have on my cage, it's a clip-on crock, so they can still sort of try to get the water out, but it's a little bit more work for them to do that. And uh, they love to dip their face in and snorkel in it and have a lot of fun. I've just found that that works for me, and this has worked for many other ferret owners. You'll see that most people just choose to not do the bottles. Number nine is bathing too often. This is a huge problem and I think the main reason for it being this way is because there are so many ferret marketed shampoos at pet stores. Um, in general, just don't use soaps or shampoos because just a little bit of warm water and maybe a washcloth or your hand will get, you know, if they have a little bit of mud on them or whatnot, you can usually get that out just fine. If you want to give your ferret a little special treat, there's something called an oatmeal soak. An oatmeal soak is when you put non-instant oats in a sock, tie it up, put it in the bath in warm water, make the water super cloudy, and then you put your ferret in, let them soak for a couple minutes, and that's it. Number eight, buying sugary treats. Again, this is the same sort of thing with the ferret shampoos. There are so many treats on the market for ferrets in the pet stores, and none of them are very healthy. Uh, there are a couple freeze-dried treats which are pretty healthy that are only one ingredient, but more like uh, the end bones and the vitamin pastes. These vitamin pastes are so bad for your ferrets, but they're marketed as a daily supplement. I talked more about this in my ferret care video, which by the way, if you haven't seen it, recommend going over and watching that first or after this video. But. Anyways, <laughs> there's so many. Uh, for example, Ferret Vite and Tomlin, I believe. These pastes contain molasses, corn syrup, malt syrup. They're very bad. And it says on the bottle, for example, Ferret Vite, daily supplement. And there are a lot of people that I've seen on the forums and groups that I'm a part of that recommend using these pastes every single day. They'll often say, I treat my ferrets really well. I feed them vitamin paste every day. But it's like, no, this isn't good. Don't do it, please. I've made this mistake myself. I had started out giving them Ferret Vite almost every day, Patsu, and that was very bad of me. I don't know why I did that, but again, we all make mistakes. And here I have a little example of a treat that you should not be feeding your ferrets and that are sold in pet stores. This is Wild Harvest Fruit and Veggie Crunch Treat. I don't know if this is still being sold, but this was found in Walmart and they still sell Wild Harvest, the brand, but Fruit and veggie crunch treat. This is awful. <laughs> I think we all know by now that ferrets should not be eating fruits and veggies. All right, number seven, buying a ferret from a pet store. Again, I talked more about this in my ferret care video, but it is so crucial that you go to the shelters first before going to a pet store or become a part of local ferret groups. I'm a part of quite a few groups 
following quite a few shelters, I am seeing ferrets being listed for rehome every single day. And in my area, it's almost every week, every two weeks, there are new ferrets being posted. People are constantly rehoming them for one reason or another. Do not support the pet shops that purchase from the Marshall Animal Mill. The greater good of ferrets, please just do not buy from a pet store. And yes, I have made this mistake in the past. When you get a ferret from a pet store, they're usually kits, so they don't quite have their personality yet. You don't really know what kind of ferret they're going to turn out to be and they're usually so they need to go through bite training litter training at that point it's very difficult you need to take them to the vet immediately just because you're getting a ferret from a shelter doesn't mean that they're going to have an unknown health history usually the shelter will have them seen by a vet first before allowing them to be adopted when at a pet store usually they have not been seen by the vet number five buying an inadequate cage and not giving enough outside cage playtime this is a huge issue I see this all the time especially in ferrets that are being posted for rehome they'll add a picture of the ferret and say oh the cage is included and it's this tiny 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 little guinea pig cage probably I've seen ones that are only this big for a ferret when you should be getting a cage a giant <laughs> this cage is taller than me there's not even room for a litter box so they just have to poop on the floor it is so awful and you know that these people are not giving them outside cage time you know this <laughs> just by looking at the pictures I have seen people who post uh, how much time should my ferret be getting out of the cage because so-and-so told me it only needed to be 30 minutes to an hour and that's just insane ferrets are not caged animals I say this all the time all the time. They thrive on a schedule of free roaming. Please try to keep them out of the cage as much as you can. And if you cannot give them proper free roam time, do not get a ferret, please. It's gonna make them extremely depressed. Number five, not researching a good diet. I have seen people who feed their ferrets meow mix, wild harvest, cooked chicken, um, bread, I have seen some things. These foods will lead to problems. Some examples being insulinoma and bladder stones. Even a great brand such as Origin has given ferrets bladder stones. So research, pl please do your research before picking up, you know, Marshall's premium diet or even just any kibble in general. I'm not gonna tell you that a mistake that ferret owners make is to not feed raw even though while I personally believe that's true, I'm not going to put that on the list because I don't want to make people feel bad if they can't feed raw for one reason or another, but I encourage everyone to look into feeding a raw diet. I had someone that just posted on the forums recently saying how their ferret developed lots of bladder stones due to a food that they were feeding that was listed on the kibble chart as a good food for a while but was removed eventually because of the pea content in the food but they didn't check to see so their ferret unfortunately developed those stones and they're very painful you usually have to get them surgically removed number four not fully ferret proofing before allowing your ferrets free roam of the house this is huge i'm gonna make a video on this in the future that might be my next video that i make it is so important that you properly ferret proof a room or even just an area before your ferrets get into it they can get into everything and if you think they can't get into it they will <laughs> they are very diligent they know what they're not supposed to get into and they will make it their goal in life to get into it so um, they, they've gotten lost because of this they can slip through cracks and holes in the walls and you lose your ferret forever they break out of the screen doors screen windows just a lot of chaos can happen if you do not properly ferret proof. Number three, not having a good exotic vet that sees ferrets regularly. And I mention sees ferrets regularly because you can have an exotic vet, you can have many in your area, but none of them see ferrets regularly because in some areas they aren't a super popular pet. Uh, for example, I'm moving in like 20 something days. I'm bringing my ferrets with me so I was scoping the area for vets. There are a lot of exotic vets in the area that I'm moving to. However, they were all pretty honest with me and they they said we don't really see ferrets that often but so-and-so does so they all referred to me to a vet um, 
in that area too that sees ferrets more often than they do. So even though they may say that they're an exotic vet, that does not mean that they have a lot of ferret experience. And then number two kind of goes with this, not having money set aside for vet bills. Ferrets are extremely, extremely expensive. Wellness checks can go from anywhere between $35 and $100 plus. It really depends on the area and that's just a wellness check. So that doesn't include vaccines or fecal checks, ear mite checks, anything like that. They are so accident prone. They'll swallow things, sometimes require emergency surgery. You have to have money put aside. I've seen people post saying that they're going to have to or they're thinking about putting their ferret down simply because they can't afford the vet bill, which is so heartbreaking, so sad, so irresponsible. If you're under 18 and you still live with your parents and they're gonna be paying for it, please make sure that they understand that make sure that they understand that this isn't just you know like a little hamster or something that you don't really have to take to the vet unless you have an emergency or whatnot this is a ferret that needs to be seen by the vet regularly that needs to have their poop checked ear mites checked you know all of this stuff and it's going to add up i find a lot of parents rehoming their ferrets because the child does not want to take care of it anymore they can't afford it they weren't expecting the vet bills we move on to number one the number one mistake that ferret owners make in general is impulse buying a ferret. You see this a lot, huge issue. This is why we have ferrets posted on Craigslist every single week, everywhere, on all parts of the world. These pets are impulse bought so frequently. My shelters in my area are filled with ferrets right now and they're having a hard time finding homes for them because they're elderly, they have issues. A lot of the ferrets I saw there had insulinoma, needed implants, which can be expensive. So people just don't wanna deal with the vet bills once they get a little bit older. And it's so, so sad. You need to think about these things before you get an animal. If you're going away to college in one year after you get a ferret, what's what are you gonna do with the ferret? If you're gonna be having a baby in a few months why did you get a ferret so many excuses that I've seen the kids won't I got this for my child and he won't play with him anymore I got this for my three-year-old kid and my three-year-old kid doesn't want him anymore he thinks he's gross doesn't want to feed him that is the end of my video I hope you guys enjoy this and learned a thing or two even if you already have ferrets or maybe uh, you're realizing that you have made these mistakes in the past and you've since corrected them I would love to hear about that in the comments or if you have any other things that you would like to add to the video definitely feel free to comment below because there are a lot of mistakes that people make and again I think it's good to recognize these mistakes that we've made. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!